hi guys and welcome to my youtube channel today we are going to talk about something very very serious i hope you watch until the end and make sure that you understand um what we're going to talk about today so that you know you can be better positioned for your financial wellness what is it that we're talking about we're talking about the difference between a funeral cover and a life cover and um the reason why i'm covering this is because i got a call from capricorn fm a friend of mine called me asked me if i would like to have a conversation on radio discussing the difference between a life cover or and a funeral cover right they sent me three questions and that's how i'm going to address um, this topic on this video okay i'm going to answer the three questions that they asked me um so that you can get clarity on what differentiates them the reason why this is important for me now is because i recently had a review financial planning review to look into my life holistically and its finances looking into my estate planning is my will done correctly is the beneficiaries on my will done correctly uh, how much am I covered for on my life cover? And do I have a life cover at work? Um, and a combination of this, will it cover my expenses and some of the money that I want to leave for my dependency? Um, you know, all these things, I looked into them. How much do I have? How much assets do I have? How much investments do I have? I had that review with my financial planner. So, and, and we went into details regarding um, a, a life cover and I found it very important the information she shared with me and the information that we discussed was very very important that I wanted also to share it with someone so that they're better positioned a lot of times we end up finding ourselves in a very not comfortable uh, circumstances or not comfortable places simply because we just didn't know right so I'm going to share some of the uh, characteristics of a funeral funeral cover and that of a life cover based on the questions that they asked me and hopefully you get to find it very helpful to an extent where you can align yourself rightfully uh the way you would want um in case of your death or in case of someone's death who is related to you right so we can minimize uh conflicts that are unnecessary okay so the first question was what are the differences between a life cover and a funeral cover like i said i'm going to describe a funeral cover and then i'm going to go um into a, a life cover and then i will also highlight as i'm describing a life cover some of the differences between the two okay so a life cover sorry we'll start with the funeral cover a funeral cover it's a cover or a policy that covers for the cost or expenses of the funeral, the preparations of the funeral and the funeral day, right? It's for you to get your catering, your your casket, your tent, all of those things so that people can eat, so that there's smoothness in the sending off or the burial, right? So you want to just, it's, it's, it's the cover which you take, so that that happens it's a funeral day it's the preparations of the funeral everything that is needed the transportation any 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 right so that is what it covers for right another characteristics that is important to to note is that it pays faster than a life cover funeral cover pays faster than a life cover it pays within 24 to 48 hours of you providing a valid death certificate right of the insured person so uh, why is that important it's important because uh, you know, sometimes a lot of us Africans, we have like maybe few days or uh, to the funeral um, to happen. So sometimes you have no money to be able to cater for that. And that's why you need a funeral cover so that someone can give you that money to prepare for the sending off so that there's smoothness in, in, in everything. Right. So it pays faster. It allows you to be able to do that at ease, you know, all the preparations and so forth. So that's what it is for, right? Another point that is important to note is that for a funeral cover, you're allowed to cover for yourself and other family members, okay? So you can cover yourself, you can cover for your mom, your dad, your siblings. You can also cover for your aunt and your uncle, all right? So the way you should think about it is who in my family, if they happen to die, I'd be expected to contribute. As we know, funerals are so important in African families, you know, and contributions are taken seriously, right? You would be considered as someone who's not supportive if 
um, you happen to not contribute where you were expected to contribute. So if really you feel like this is the person you want to support, this is the person you want to contribute onto their a funeral, just make sure that you have them on the on your funeral cover so that when the expectation of money comes, you have a cover for it. You don't take it from your savings, right? So and that's what insurance are for, right? To help us in case we need money um, and we don't dip into our savings. So that's how you can decide who in your family you include on the cover. On that note, we also need to be cautious that one person can get the maximum of 100,000 payout per one underwriter, right? For an example, if me, I cover my mom for 100,000 and my sister also cover um, our mom for 100,000 and we all using Liberty or Standard Bank, which the underwriter is Liberty, then they will pay the 100,000 to the to the first person who actually claims because one person per one underwriter gets paid a maximum of 100,000. I know as African people say, I'm a tanda, I'm a life cover. We do a lot of them covering people, the same people with different companies. And you find that those companies have same underwriters. If you feel like your funeral will be, or the funeral that you're covering for, or the person you're covering, you're covering on the funeral cover would be more expensive than 100k and you want more than 100k just make sure that your siblings within the family um they are using a different under underwriter so that both of you can come with 100k 100k from the different underwriters okay um and yeah we need to talk about this with our siblings because if we don't talk you would you wouldn't even know if they are uh using the same underwriter as you and then you will get paid and then they don't get paid Sometimes what I've heard is that other relatives, especially elderly relatives, they take your death certificate and they claim first. And then they don't even say that they've already claimed. When now as a sibling or as a, as, a, as a daughter, when you go to claim, you find that the funeral cover for that particular underwriter has already been maxed out, it's already been claimed, right? So just be careful, you know, around that. I think that's a, that's a very, you know, caution um, sign there where we need to just be careful that, you know, we're doing the right thing, especially among siblings when we're covering our parents, okay? So when it comes to a life cover, on the other hand, it is the cover that we take or the policy that we take to support our family's lives way past our death, right? So I feel like, and I know Mapalo said this, that I feel the same, that a life cover is actually superior to a funeral cover. This is because it does not only look into the death, the, the, the burial date or the, the, the funeral day. It looks way beyond the funeral day, like your lifestyle after the passing or the lifestyle of your kids after the passing, the lifestyle of your dependency after the passing. So really, for me, I feel like, yes, we can have the funeral day, but people leave. And then you find it's you, it's it's your siblings. And then really, you don't know what to do because there is a bond needed. There is a car loan there. You really do not know how to sustain the credit that your parents had because they didn't have a life cover in place. So I feel like if you can cater for those things, really, you take out a lot of financial stress that comes with the passing of a parent. So if you're a parent uh, or you're a person with dependency, please consider looking into uh, a life cover. And again, this is not a, fin um, a financial advice, guys. If you're looking for a financial advisor, look for someone who is um, registered with the financial um, or the FSCA. Exactly. That's what I'm saying, right? So I'm sure that we all know that one child who happened to change schools and downgrade the lifestyle simply because their parent are passed on that's not nice so if you are the parent please look into catering for those so that your child doesn't have to change their lifestyle in case of your passing okay so when we look into a life cover we're looking into a policy that ensures that the family standard of living remains the same and it doesn't change after your passing that you are able to provide for your family especially if you have the breadwinner um for your family the same way that you would have if you were alive okay so it it it, it ensures that your your there's financial continuity and you sustain the same standard of living for your dependency so and yeah unlike a funeral cover 
you are only required to cover for yourself on a on a life cover so those are some of the things that you need to note as a differentiator between a life cover and a funeral cover and then uh, another point that i want to highlight is that um when you're considering taking a um a life cover think about all the expenses that you have that you may want your your, your life cover to pay for and also think about how much you want to leave for your dependency so that they'll be able to leave. I think most of the time when we think about this, we only cater for the expenses for your house, for your car, for your credit card. And we forget that after those are being paid or have been paid, our kids still need to leave. So we really need to think beyond just paying for debts because um, then your life cover will pay for your debts, but it should also have enough to be able to give your dependency uh, the life that they need. Because to be honest, one thing that we do not need is for our children or our dependency to inherit our credit. To be honest, in the book that I was reading from Debt to Riches, there is a story there where a lady mentioned that after the passing of her father, they lose two cars, her mom's and her father's. And her mom was not working. And she also mentioned that my mom didn't have to work because our dad was looking after us, you know, perfectly fine. OK, um, and. Uh, at the passing of the father, they lost a, a car that was painful. She was shocked. And then soon enough, a few months later, they're losing the house, right? And and it, those are the type of things that we do not want to see. And they were losing the house because they were not able to afford um, the bond for the house, right? So we need to be able to cater for that through a life cover for financial continuity of our dependency. And she said, I lost a home and I also lost my potential to study because my father was the one who was going to fund my studies in the university and she ended up not going to university because of that so we don't want that for our kids we want to be able to also support the dreams of our children even after our passing so that's why a life cover is important okay so also unlike a funeral cover like i said if for one underwriter you have a maximum of 100,000 for a life cover. You can cover up to 10,000, uh, 10 million, sorry, 10 million, right? Which is a lot, but you don't have to cover for the rest of 10 million, but you can cover up to, right? So you need to just assess what are my credit, what are my needs for my children and so forth and so forth and determine the cover, okay? So you could give a sustainable life to your children even after your passing okay so another important thing on the life cover and this was important for me personally when i was assessing if i was covered enough is that for your life cover you also need to inquire if your life cover can cover you for something like your disability your retrenchment or your critical illness right and the reason for this is that if this are to happen right if these are to happen, you still want to be able to pay for the credits that you have, for your home loan, for your car loan, for etc. All the loans that you still have that are active at the time in which maybe you are retrenched or you become disabled or you have critical illness. Because those can happen and they can reduce your ability to earn or your ability to increase your income. So you should make sure that if you have the ability, you are including them on your life cover so that there's continuation in your life in case of this incidents as well and that's also a differentiator between what a funeral cover can do and what a life cover is able to do right and um in terms of a, a life cover there will be a medical tests that are done for diabetes for all critical illness hiv and aids they will check all those uh, diseases if you have them right and this is to determine how risky you are which then leads to how much premium you're going to pay right they want to know if they're covering what they're covering actually right and you need to be there are questions that they will ask you if you smoke if you drink and so forth please be as honest as possible on those questions because those are the questions which makes it complex to pay when they find out that you were actually a heavy drinker when, and you didn't disclose, right? That means that they were not covering you for the things which you have disclosed, right? So, so then it becomes complex to claim. So for the smoothness of claiming, disclose those things. Um, be as honest as you can when it comes to those things that they're asking you. And just try to do a life cover that will do the medicals. Because if they don't do it, they will do a very thorough research in finding out what it is that you didn't disclose. And 
finding maybe an excuse on the other hand to not pay you um right so please make sure that you get that medicals and um you are as honest as possible as well when it comes to the questions that they they, they ask you right again when we speak about life cover and we speak about millions 10 million 5 million people say that ah and i don't want to spoil someone have you seen them they go to i blew it i don't want to just give my child too much money yay i will I, I need my child to learn ethics of hard work and so forth and so forth but i feel that this is one of the tools where you can build generational wealth right and you can leave something for your children where they can lean on and also pass it on to their children as well so this is where we are saying it ends with us we're going to put structures in place to sustain financially our lives and that of our children okay so if you're worried about your your your, your children squandering the money Firstly, you can start by educating them about personal finance, the importance of managing money. Secondly, you can put structures in place that will allow them or the money to be paid at certain milestone when they go to university, when this happens, when they are 21, when they are 25, you know, you can do that, right? So consider thinking about that if you do not really trust your children or if you don't think that your guardian will um, execute the things which you want, your wishes correctly. So you make sure that you set up those things so the second question that they asked me was that are both important to have uh can people afford to prioritize one over the other especially when we're looking into saving money right so to answer this question yes both of them are important because for a funeral cover you want to have money to be able to cater for the funeral day and for life cover you want to be able to have enough money to cater for the expenses of your dependencies when you have passed so that the lifestyle do not change they stay in the same neighborhood same schools and so forth right so they are both important but if one person had to prioritize one if i have to prioritize one i would personally choose a life cover over a funeral cover and this is why i would choose a life cover because there are some options of um, giving you at least 10% of your coverage um, paid to you 24 to 48 hours after providing a death certificate or 50,000 Rand, right? And that's just equivalent to a funeral cover. That means with that money, I would be able to uh, cater for um, funeral day expenses or my dependency would be able to cater for funeral day expenses. So I would choose a life cover because I know that it will not only cater for the day of my burial but it will cater for the lifestyle that my dependency get to live after my passing right so i'm not only and, and hence i would choose a life cover because then it will pay my debts i will know that my 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 dependency will still have my houses my businesses will continue because they the the debt would be catered for through a life cover and i've left them enough to be able to be sustainable to be honest I think funeral cover is so much short term in terms of its nature of support and life cover is more of long term in terms of its nature of support. Hence, I would actually um, choose a, a, a life cover. And I know that people actually are under the impression that a life cover is expensive. I don't know where we get that. But I understand when it comes to funeral cover, they tell you at home, Wuti, hey, you are at an age where you must open a community funeral cover, this and this and this, right? But you never hear anything about life covers. Maybe because there's like a negative connotation of if you have a life cover, people will kill you. But to be honest, guys, I mean, we really need to be honest with one another, especially spouses and children. Like, let's be honest with one another. Let's cover ourselves correctly. And we cannot be afraid of being killed for this because simply because you 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 covered yourself or you're protecting the lives of your of your of your children right it can happen it's possible hence maybe you need to be strategic on what you tell your children when it comes to those things or what you teach them um in case you happen to die and they get the the the, the, the money right so also we need to think about this this way when we're thinking about a life cover it's more cheaper when we are younger because we are banking on our health when we're younger we are much healthier so when we take it when we're younger the underwriting age is actually sorry about this the underwriting age is actually um lower and then we are healthy we're not too much risky so then the premium is lower 
when you are above 40 and you are taking a life cover trust me it's crazy expensive so hence it's important for you to look into uh taking it when you are much younger okay the last question was how do i know if i have chosen the best cover for myself my family and what should i look into on the policy right um i want to answer this this way it's very important that you sit with your financial planner sit with your financial planner who's going to look into your life holistically checking all your needs in all areas of your life and 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 fill you in in terms of the type of covers based on your risks you would need um and that's how you can determine which policies to take and that's how you would know if you are covered correctly to be honest there is so many risks and sometimes we cannot afford to be able to pay insurances for everything like but there is a lot of policies out there there is really a lot because we live in a risky world right so you need to determine what's your priority with your financial planner the things which if they happen it will cause financial catastrophes you know like there will be some distress there in the in the family or there will be some distress with you so therefore those are the things that you really need to consider covering that will be it this video was a bit longer but i hope that it was beneficial for you and your journey in your coverage or your insurances thank you so much i hope you like comment or even subscribe if you like the content of this channel goodbye